and um, uh, my two advisors whom I, who agreed to be my thesis advisors at Princeton were Michael Graves and Henry Jandel. Both of us, both of them are no longer with us. But um, I guess I, what I was looking at with regard to the United Nations uh, site in Manhattan uh, was, I guess, historically the original contest for the design of the site, which reflects why the site is the way it is now. And the contestant who won the, um, the uh, right with his site design was obviously Le Corbusier. Um, and he partnered, Le Corbusier partnered with Harrison and Abramovitz at the time who were the licensed architects uh, who actually put their signatures on Le Corbusier's work to enable him to build design in Manhattan. Um, my inquiry was in, really into what the United Nations needs were uh, for expansion because I had heard they were having various problems in accommodating all the delegates and the delegates' families during the time of year when they were meeting at the General Assembly. And I guess since I lived near there for quite a few years, I was aware of how the UN site didn't, as designed, did not integrate with New York City very well. It sat off like a, a walled castle. Uh, and the density of the site was very much at odds with the rest of Manhattan. So I went to look into various problems, both urban design and building design, site design, uh, to really find out why or how we would integrate the site as designed or completed around 1948-49 how, what opportunities there were to complete the site with facilities that could further accommodate delegates, all the delegates to the UN and their families. And um, that was the exploration. Um, I guess uh, there is something rather odd about the site in terms of the physical plan for the east side of Manhattan, which is that the UN site, before it was developed with those buildings, uh, was much lower essentially than the entire area around it. In fact, the site was occupied by an abattoir uh, where they used to kill animals for food. And that's because it was much lower. There was kind of, it was 
at sea level and it was considered uh, not a very usable site. And that's where the UN was developed. And I think it's the elevation of the site that made it hard, both hard to relate to the rest of the city. It was at a lower elevation. And um, it was became essentially isolated, while other institutions along the east side, most notably at that time hospitals, um, were being developed along that site, uh, or at least the east side of Manhattan. They were using a space that I guess was not considered prime for residential. Con Edison had an electric generating plant to the south of the UN site. And um, the north of the site was empty. It's now residential. Um, but my exploration was what were the needs of the UN at the time? What buildings did they actually need? How to integrate the UN site with the rest of, the, of Manhattan in such a way that uh, the public and private uh, aspects of people could meet and perhaps integrate the general grid of Manhattan with the UN site. And my first exploration was to, as I said, find out exactly what the UN needed and um, I went to the ambassador, the lady who was then the New York City ambassador to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. She lived in Manhattan, and she allowed me to send out to all the delegates questionnaires about mm -hmm. their accommodations in Manhattan. Mm -hmm and what they felt was needed. And she was very helpful. Uh, her name was Frances Loeb. And uh, I guess she was of the very famous yes. Lehman Loeb family in Manhattan. There is a Frances Loeb library at Harvard GSD. Frances Loeb at Vassar. She funded the Art Museum at Vassar College after this. I had no idea who she was when I met with her. Uh -huh. She had me to her home in Manhattan. Uh, and offered to send out my questionnaire to make to find out what the program would be, my building program for the UN United Nations expansion on or around its site. Uh, and from that, from all the responses I got, uh, I developed a program at the time uh, to add facilities to the UN site. And uh, essentially, at the time, it came out that the delegates needed housing, temporary housing. They wanted to come to the meetings at the UN each year, but it was very difficult for them to have, find housing and schools for their families that were essentially temporary. 
on that base.